locked. Welcome! It's such a pleasure to see Have you seen any... Your Excellency. Lady de Sade. I tracked down your man near the coin guard barracks. Finally. Did you capture him? Let's just say that I put an end to his activities. His reputation in Serene is forever tarnished. Matters turned out a little more complicated than anticipated. He is hiding in a room in the coin guard tavern. Why didn't you have him arrested? Angry citizens have gathered round the building. They have sworn to avenge themselves after discovering his fraud. I decided it better to avoid the mob. But if you wish to capture him alive, I advise you to hurry. Governor Buren will be happy to learn that a legate with great assiduity will soon be joining the island of Tierfredi. Thank you for your help, Excellency, and allow me to offer you this modest present for your voyage. I need to be going. Goodbye, Excellency. Goodbye, Lady de Sade.
I wish you a good day, Your Excellency. To my help! And death to the Abbas! To my help! And death to the Abbas! To my help! And death to the Abbas! To my... To my help! And death to the others! You're running out of energy. Drink a potion. You're running out of energy. Drink a potion. Into my hell. And death to the others! Move away. Things are about Come to get taste my saber. Madam, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that I won't make for good company. Good day, my lady. How might I be of service? You can start by explaining to me why you refuse to honor the orders agreed upon with the guard. There's been a misunderstanding, madam. Of course we're ready to honor the orders. In fact, I've already had a word with your master at arms. They're asking that we pay again, despite having already paid. It's just that the price has gone up since. I've nothing to do with it. This is inadmissible. 
If you agree on a sum, you need to honor that agreement. I'm sorry, madam. I'm just an agent, and I'm only obeying orders. Your master has apparently asked you to demand a second payment for this merchandise. That's right. He told me that their attendant seemed to be hiding something when he passed the order. And so he must have thought the guard would end up paying in the end whatever he asked for. I'll be damned. And I'm the one they've sent to settle the affair. Sorry, Captain. It's nothing personal. I'm only following orders. Following orders? Yeah, we hear you. Makes one wonder which one of the two of us is a coin guard. Why don't we go and solicit other suppliers, Kurt? When we've already paid for the merchandise? If these thieves agree to reimburse the original payment, it's what we do immediately. And do know, in the future, we won't be shopping with them. Well, I should think not. This whole story sounds suspicious and stinks of a scandal. You were demanding a second payment, but refused to reimburse the one that was already made. I'm not the one demanding nor refusing. It's my master. This stubborn fool is pushing me to madness. You understand now why I'm asking for your help? I don't think you understand who you were dealing with. Perhaps I failed to present myself properly. Lady de Sade, niece of the Prince d'Orsay, and legate of the Congregation of Merchants. During our conversation, you explained to me that your master forced you to commit a crime. That's regrettable, especially as you will be considered his accomplice in extortion and theft. You know as well as I that the Congregation does not tolerate such illegal activities. But I'm only obeying orders. That's a shame. Well, as orders are the only language you seem to understand, I order you to return the guard the merchandise without delay, unless you'd rather your master is hung and that you finish your days in prison. I beg your pardon, my lady, but you are not my master. Moreover, the attendant of the guard was quite specific, saying this affair should be handled with extreme discretion. So I seriously doubt that you'll be wanting to drag us in front of a judge. That would stir up the muck. Whatever is he talking about, Kurt? Your guess is as good as mine. This is preposterous. Your master is a thief. And I have no patience for bandits and robbers. Either you give us back what's ours, or we'll take it. Your idea of diplomacy isn't all that different from my own. Now to the devil with you. Since you leave us no choice. The merchant's clerk isn't hearing your arguments. The only thing left is a show of strength. Sorry, Greenblood. If I'd have known, I wouldn't have gotten you mixed up in this. He seems to have grown wiser all of a sudden. Yes, yes! Don't hit me anymore! Very well. I'm counting on you to deliver this merchandise as quickly as possible. Yes, my lady. I'll take care of it immediately.
Captain, you set sail soon. Have you seen to our little business? Yes. We were finally able to recover your merchandise. Excellent news. I'm afraid, though, that your mission isn't completely finished, Kurt. Blast me. I'm a captain, not an errand boy. The commander was quite explicit. Very well. What do I need to do? The merchandise that you obtained needs to be sent to Tier 3D as soon as possible. But the Port Authority formalities for shipping take an eternity to wade through. And we've already lost quite a bit of time with this dishonest merchant. Are you blatantly asking us to smuggle this merchandise and contraband? I would never ask you to do such a thing, Your Excellency. Ah. But you don't mind asking that of Kurt? Well, now, uh, if he finds an alternative solution that is less uh, illegal, uh, that would be fine. The method matters not. But this cargo must reach the Isle on the next ship. Marvelous. Well, then, I await your return with utmost impatience. I'm certain you shall do what's required. Who I am. Don't put up, imbeciles! I have a ship to catch! Do you hear that? Yes. That's Constantine's voice. It's coming from the upper floor. Sounds as if he's locked up. And I have a feeling they're expecting company. Be careful. The slightest itchy word to these brutes will have them drawing blades to scratch it. Negotiation may be the solution. As you say, this breed of brutes won't spit on ransom money. What a waste. I'd rather sneak around them than give half a coin to these seedy fellows. He's a no, a rich man. 
He needed to be taught a lesson, but it's better we grab some coin. With all those posters we posted, someone with deep pockets will show up sooner or later to liberate the rooster. Oh, he's making a great deal of noise. We could knock him out. Oh. Oi! Where do you think you're going? You're in our territory. I'm looking for my cousin, and it appears that he is held here against his wishes. How do you know that? His voice is one of a kind, gentlemen, and we can hear it in the street. I order you to free him immediately. I order? I order, is that right? You're not cousins for nothing, you and that other drunkard. If you think all you need to do is come here and give us orders to get what you want... Looks like we'll need to sharpen our words with our new friends. I'm afraid so. To my help! And death to the others! Move away! Things are about to get dicey! It's blocked. It's not possible just now.
locked. Well, this has been monumentous, gentlemen, but I have more important things to attend to. An island to govern, treaties to sign, riches to expedite, and a demanding father to impress! Constantine, it's me! My fair cousin! Oh, my lucky star! <laughs> Always there to pull me out of my fight. I do what I can. We are departing soon. Your father wasn't pleased by your absence this morning. Have you ever seen him happy about anything when it comes to me? You know what he thinks of me. He cares about you. I know that. He appointed you governor, didn't he? He is ridding himself of a source of constant disappointment. <sighs> Enough said. Today, we set sail for adventure. If you only knew how these river scum treated me. Do me a courtesy, fair cousin. Now that we stand boldly alongside the brave Kurt, let's give them their money's worth. There's no one left to pay, your highness. The brave Kurt and your cousin have already settled the books. Really, now? What a shame. I would have loved to have seen that. We've nothing left to do then than to board our ship. An adventure awaits us at the end of the street.
fruit swarm through? Is your hat out of style? Does your vest belong to last year's fashion? Welcome, it's such a... Have you seen it? for your visit. See you soon.
Hello. What can I do for you? We're your replacements. You're dismissed. Finally. We were starting to grow moss. Courage, me hearties.
seen a few escapes in my time, but I never thought I'd see someone go to all this trouble to break into a prison. It's blocked. Welcome. Have you? Your Highness, I'm happy to see you. Your absence this morning worried both your father and me. Come now, Sir de Corsillon. My father may have been angry, outraged, or disappointed, but he's never worried about me. I'm sad to have caused you any worry, though. 
Would you believe that I was rotting away in a sinister jail, guarded by thugs ready to kill me? Though still seeing double from last night's drink, I was preparing an ingenious escape plan when... Ta-da! My fair cousin jumped up out of nowhere and saved me. I'm quite the fairy tale damsel in distress. You might have refrained from the company of bandits the night before such an important departure. Take away the risk and halve the pleasure, de Cossillon. It is the salt of life. Hmm. I fear that some of my teachings have been misunderstood. But you wanted to ask me something, de Sade? What will be your official title on Tier 3 D? Or are you just here to keep an eye on us? Come now, don't be ridiculous. I'm coming in the capacity of official advisor, nothing more. But His Highness has also asked me to report to him on certain strategic observations. I am therefore required to take note of all events, uh, chart the island and its resources, but also obtain as much knowledge as possible concerning the more dangerous creatures of the island. Your help will be extremely valuable to me. I've no longer the legs of an adventurer. <laughs> it's always a privilege to help, Master. I need to be leaving. I have quite a few things to do before we raise anchor. Lively there, lads and lasses! I promised the merchants and their prince we'd be off before the tide. You, man, carry that properly. That porcelain is worth more than your life. <coughs> uh, some children we'd be best to refuse. Captain Vasco. And you are? I'm de Sade, the prince's niece. All is in order. We will soon be embarking on your boat. It's a ship. Not a boat. Apologies. Constantine d'Orsay, future governor of Tier Freddy. I'm enchanted, Captain. I am eager to board your ship. Enchanted as well, Your Highness. I hope you enjoy your voyage. Are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to set sail with the tide, as agreed upon. We're short a crew member. The cabin boy is missing. But have no fear, we will leave without him if he does not present himself before the tide. Is he an important member of the crew? We don't need him for sailing or navigation. He's only a cabin boy. He must have simply had a bit too much to drink in celebrating his departure. Like another I know. I doubt that Jonas was never one to fancy drink. And it's been two days since last he was seen. No, I fear something bad has happened to him. Might I ask you, if you hear anything, could you report it to me? I would like to set sail with a clear mind. Could you tell me a little about your guild? We are masters of the oceans. Our ships can sail where no others dare. Thanks to your magic, so I've heard. How do you become a Nort? Our magic, yes, uh, that only the Norts master. As for your question, any child born on one of our ships is seaborn. He is a Nort from birth. Others are sea gifted, joining the Norts for different reasons, often from a young age. It's how the guild is made and maintains its numbers. Could you tell me anything about our destination? The island of Tiafredi? It is a magnificent place. Wild. Spared from your wars and your mines, for now. The natives have a relationship with their land and consider it sacred. They were very friendly people, welcoming. That will appear to you strangely familiar. I've also heard that there are a great many exotic creatures, some enormous. But I wouldn't know what else to tell you. I've never strayed far from the ports. What do you think of our port? Are you referring to this one? It is the biggest high seas port on the continent. Thanks to your prince, even though it remains part of your city, it holds a particular status for us Norts. 
Certain zones are owned completely by us, and maritime law holds office. It's a good port. Were it not for the Malachor, it would be a pleasant place to dock. When did you see your cabin boy for the last time? It's been two days since I've had any news at all. It wasn't out of the ordinary until this morning. My men have free shore leave when we're at dock. But the day of departure, every able-bodied sailor must be present on the ship. Does the boy know anyone in Serene? Other than fellow Norts, you mean? I don't think so, but it's difficult to be sure. Miss Jonas, does he have any close friends amongst the crew? In tradition, we are all members of the same family. But yes, there would be Flavio and Lauro. Might I have a word with them? As you wish. You'll find them over there, in port. Have you seen anyone wandering about? Suspicious looking, maybe clandestine passengers? Take a look around. There are far too many comings and goings to spot possible stowaways. As long as they don't try and get on my ship, I pay no attention to them. That said, we did catch ourselves a smuggler just a while ago. A smuggler? Maybe he could be of some use. Where could I find him? In the port jails, not far from the warehouses. Why I ask you, why the sudden interest in smugglers and the odd stowaway? Nothing to bother yourself about. I'm just curious. You wouldn't, by the sheerest of coincidences, be on the trail of a couple of heretics, Your Excellency. The same a couple of the ambassadors of Teleme's men have been looking for nigh on two days. And so you know about that? Of course. The Cardinal's henchmen are hard to miss, even in a crowd. And they were making quite a fuss, hoping we would cave in and help them in their hunt. Feel free to carry out your own investigation, but you'll end up with the same answers. The port brigs, just like the warehouses, are property of the Nords. No one else may enter. Be back soon, Captain. We need to have a word with that people smuggler the sailor mentioned. He's a Captain Kurt, like yourself. And in order to interrogate the smuggler, we'll need to find a way into his jail. Day. Someone told me that you were a friend of Jonas, the young cabin boy who has gone missing. That's right, yeah. Are you looking for him? Yes. Your captain asked me to go and find him. Happy to hear he's taken the disappearance seriously. What can I do for you? What do you think about Captain Vasco? He's a damn good navigator and an excellent leader of men. He knows his craft well, in spite of being so young. How old is he? He's not seen his 25th year yet. If he keeps it up, he'll be an admiral one day. When did you last see him? Two days ago, in the evening. We went to have a drink in the tavern. Jonas, Lauro, and myself. Did anything seem out of the ordinary? Was he troubled? Maybe a tad troubled. Like he was somewhere else. Why would that be? Give me your best guess. Boy, I haven't the faintest idea. What does Jonas do in his free time, when you're on land? He just hangs around here or there. 
You know the cabin boys don't have half a sailor's wages. And when evening comes, we usually go down the tavern with good old Lauro. Did he ever have one too many? Never. He sips his point like it was bad medicine. One drink lasts him the whole night. Does he know anyone in Serene? No one, far as I know. Do you think he could have made himself any enemies? I wouldn't think that for a moment. Jonas has a good heart, and he steers clear of trouble and troublemakers. I don't know where to start with this. Do you have any idea? No. Lauro won't stop telling anyone who will lend him an ear that the boy was carried off by thugs. And you don't believe him? I like Lauro, don't get me wrong, he's like a brother. But to be honest, he drinks a little more than he should. The itch for a drink gets us all, but to him more than others, and when you drink too much, the imagination wanders. Here, yesterday, it was me who tied one over, and I thought I heard Jonas's voice by the canal. I call back to him, as you guessed, but then nothing. Drink. It blurs the senses. I need to be going. Farewell. Good day, sailor. I've been told that you know the missing cabin boy well. Is that right? You talking about Jonas? You bet your stars I know him. But like I've been crying to the nine death winds. He didn't go missing, he was taken. What do you think about Captain Basco? He's a just man, who knows his knots. He's well appreciated by the crew. It's a pity that he hasn't much heart for lass now and again. Always seems unhappy, our captain. Were you a witness to the event? Yes, I was. Even though I'd had a few tumblers in the belly, I hadn't yet lost my head. The other day, in the tavern, I saw him talking to a well-dressed man, surrounded by some other sly ruffians. And then when we left, him and I, Flavia left a little earlier, you understand? Well, those brutes were there, waiting for him. They just up and took him like that. Grabbed his arms and puff. Gone. Vanished. Why didn't you intervene? <sighs> I tried to, believe me. But my legs betrayed me. Wavering they were. And I fell into the gutter. Did you report this to the captain? Unfortunately not. I know all too well what weight my words carry. Even Flavia treated me like a drunken fool. And the captain? No. Not telling him that. I still have some pride left. You get me? Did Jonas seem troubled to you the night he disappeared? Maybe. For sure he wasn't his usual self. Do you know what was on his mind? No. No idea. Why would anyone want to snatch a mere cabin boy? How would I know? Jonas is a gentle boy who keeps his head down. <sighs> You think my story is nothing but miss too, don't you? It's just that I can't imagine a gang of thugs hoping to get a ransom for a cabin boy. Did anyone else see the kidnapping? There was still a small crowd in the tavern. But outside, I seem to recall that regular being there. We play cards with him from time to time. The kind of fellow who plays from morning to night time to be that skilled. But now and again he comes out. When nature calls, you know. I kind of remember his face being there. Thank you, Lauro. I need to be going. Strange story, this is. Something isn't right here. I can feel it. We need to lift the veil on this.
Good day, tavern keeper. Can I pour you anything? It's you. I didn't recognize you, my scruffy young pup. You put this place to shambles last night. I am quite sorry about that. I'm afraid I let the festive spirit get the better of me. Better of you? You broke everything! If you think for a second that I'm... Come on now. Don't be angry about such trivialities. I'm certain we can make amends. Now, what can I do? Hmm. The contents of this pouch should be worth your forgiveness, what do you say? Uh, forgiven and even forgotten, your lordship. Whatever can I do for you? How is business going these days? It's picking up. We've not seen many new customers, but of late, things are looking better. The Malachor and the neighboring walls have dampened commerce. The epidemic still rages, but the possibility of finding a cure on that island has given people something to hope for. Now that we have a city there, quite a few seafarers come by to spend their wages. Has the Malachor really put a damper on your business? <laughs> More than a damper. They were soaked. When the sickness began to spread, a wave of panic followed in its wake. People stopped going out of their homes. They were afraid. I was close to closing shop, I tell you. And then, thankfully, the alchemists of the bridge said that you couldn't just catch it like that. People are still distrustful, as is their nature, but they are leaving home again. It's a start. I also lost quite a few regular customers. Dead or too scared to venture back. Oh, but that's nothing new to you. <laughs> the city would have sunk in the water if not for trade with the new isle. With all these sailors coming and going, you must have heard some stories about Tear for D. Right. Even stories that my heaviest drinkers would have trouble believing. They say that man trees live there. Dragons and gigantic creatures. Treasure abounds under every rock. And the source of eternal life is hidden somewhere there. <laughs> Last night, some noughts even told me they brought back one of those giant beasts into the pool. Ah, but you know the kind. If you ask my opinion, the drink was fueling their imaginations. I am looking for a nought. A young cabin boy who has been missing roll call for two days now. A nought, you say? That's not a lot to go on. There are quite a few that come to my tavern. According to one of his fellows, he would have been taken right here. A kidnapping? In my establishment? You surely jest. At least I hope you do. I would have noticed. That doesn't hold water. Someone told me about one of your faithful clients. A big gambler, it would seem. I see. An able-bodied man. Passes his time lightening the pouches of sailors coming through. Where might I find him at this time? Here. He would never give away his chair at his table. Anything else? I need to be off. Farewell. Goodbye. Who are you? I don't recognize you. Am I in your debt? No, have no fear about that. It's for a different reason that I'm here. I'm looking for a nought that disappeared two days ago after visiting this establishment. A young cabin boy. Two members of his crew accompanied him. Yes, that does ring a bell. I've played with the three of them. Tell me what happened that evening. A rich merchant came in with a band of strong arms. The kind of men you can round up for a few coins, if you catch my drift. They exchanged words with the cabin boy. The kid was defensive, not sitting pretty. And then they finally left. And after that? It just so happens that I did go out for a breather. I needed some fresh air. And I think I might well have seen those same men grab him. But that was none of my business. I wouldn't have thought that they were kidnapping him, if that's what it was. They weren't particularly rough with him. 
What can you tell me about the boy? How was he that night? He seemed rather nervous, as if he was worried about something. Didn't feel like playing, that I remember. And he must have been right to be nervous, if he's disappeared. Who was the rich merchant, do you think? A jilted lover? A money lender? No, my lady, you're in luck. It so happens that I know the man. It was Sir Fontaine, that merchant. Where can I find him? He has a house in the wealthy boroughs, just off the canal. A stone's throw from the Tulema Embassy. Thank you. You've been immensely helpful. This man is completely owned by his love for the game. Do you think we can trust him? What would he gain from lying? I have no idea. But what would any wealthy merchant gain from holding a penniless child? Might I help you, my lady? I would like to have a word with Sir Fontaine. He is absent, but the lady of the house could certainly receive you. Enter, please. Oh, I know you. I've seen you at court. You are Lady de Sade. And to what do I owe the honor of your visit, Excellency? I would like to have a word with your husband. He is not here, but perhaps I could be of help. It concerns a delicate matter. We are looking for a missing cabin boy. According to witnesses, he had an argument with your husband before being taken. I see. I am afraid that you have been misled. You seem to have come to the wrong conclusion. The cabin boy you speak of was not taken. He has simply returned home. Excuse me. But I'm not sure I understand. Don't you see, Your Excellency? We got our son back. I am very surprised. Several witnesses confirmed that your son had a fight with your husband, and that his men escorted him from the tavern using force. If he had joined your husband willingly... Witnesses? In a tavern? And you choose to believe these drunkards over a respectable family? These witnesses are all in agreement, and it is their testimonies that have led me to your doorstep. My son was probably shocked to have found us. My husband and the other men might have simply had to carry him. A gesture that your drunkards must have misunderstood. What was your son doing on a nought ship? Why would they have taken him? It is what they do. Through pacts and contracts, they steal away young children from their mothers. What are you talking about? I would have thought that a legate would know these things. But it is true that you are young and inexperienced. It seems that you have been protected from the turpitudes of our own nation and their terrible allies. This horrible, constant ransoming that they put us through. But I will not say another word. You will have no trouble verifying the details now that you know what to look for. Where might I find your son now? I cannot say, Excellency. You must understand why. Until the Noughts have set sail, we live in fear they will take him back from us. This pact... It sounds like some fear-inducing story. The Noughts wouldn't be the first to recruit through dubious means. Excuse me, madam, but I haven't quite finished my inquiries yet. If you would be so courteous, I would like you to leave. I have told you all that I have to say. With respect, my lady.
madam. Are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to set sail with the tide, as agreed upon. I'm still without news of my cabin, boy. But we will have to do without. I spoke with a woman who told me she was the mother of the cabin boy. She claims that her son was taken from her. Taken? Her son is sea gifted. His parents were required to give him up to honor the terms of a contract. A contract? But what kind of contract are we speaking of? A commercial contract. In exchange for services rendered by the Nords, some families seed more than gold. In some cases, nations even trade some of their subjects before they're born. I wouldn't be able to tell you the condition of Jonas's contract. I didn't even know he was originally from Serene. But what I can tell you is the young man hasn't seen his parents since he was a small child. And ever since, he's been a Nord. Our ships are his home. We are his only family. Be back soon, Captain. You see anyone else who might be able to help us? Anyone who's not a Nort? Oh, how I would like my father to be implicated in this sordid business. Our old teacher must surely know what's going on here. Let's go talk to him. Yes? Well, how can your old professor be of service to you? I've had a word with Lady Fontaine. You must know her. That rich family that lives near the docks. She told me a strange story about her son who was a cabin boy on our ship. She said that he was taken when he was a child due to some contract with the Nords. Who was a cabin boy? Do you mean he's no longer one? They took him back to bring him home. Well, that is very unpleasant news, De Sade. We need to do all we can to bring the boy back to his ship. Since time immemorial, there's always been a certain price to pay for the services of the Nords. Children born on their ships belong to them. It's the rule of the sea. But certain contracts are so important that they also require children to be offered in exchange. From time to time, the congregation has passed such accord, and certain noble families had to give their children up. Are you telling me that the Fontaines lost their son in an agreement signed between my uncle and the Nords? Um, no. That pact ended a long time ago. This cabin boy couldn't have been a part of that contract. But Sir Fontaine has made a fortune trading with the Alliance, uh, uh, via ships. Do you mean he would have offered up his own son in exchange for wealth? Well, he probably did it before the birth of the child, and regretted it afterwards. But that is of little importance. What counts most is that you bring the boy back to the Norts as quickly as possible. Breaking a contract with the seafarers has always cost us dearly. Our nation could feel it in its coffers. I will do my best. A father selling his own son for a few boat rides. For ugly, that is ugly. Lady Fontaine didn't seem to have any knowledge of that detail. That could be of use to us. This document mentions another property, a warehouse. That would be a great place to hide. Shall we take a peek?
are. Be careful. Fontaine won't be alone. He'll have his henchmen with him. A handful of underlings don't scare us away. Right, cousin? Let's just try to remain discreet. Lady de Sade, what are you doing here? I have come looking for your son. The Noughts are worried about his disappearance. Uh, those Noughts took him from us, but now we've got him back, and he'll be staying with us. Would you be so kind as to hear what I have to say, Sir Fontaine? I looked into the contract that binds you to the Noughts. It was indeed you who ceded your son to them in exchange for help with your business with the bridge. It is... it is so. But that sort of contract is ignoble. I never would have signed it if I had known. You should have thought of that before. Breaking the contract could have regrettable consequences for the congregation. The prince will know how to negotiate with the Norths. If they take my son back, my wife will die of sadness. Her sadness would be all the more terrible if she learned of your role in this story. Don't you think? You wouldn't dare tell her. I, I beg you. You were not leaving me with a choice. Very well. Take the key and take him away. Cursed be the day I delivered my son unto the noughts. All children leave the nest one day or another, sir. Farewell. It's here that our man keeps his son. <sighs> Abusive fathers. Locked. Who are you? My name is Desarde. I'm Legate of the Congregation. Your captain has sent me to find you. And were you able to convince my... my father to allow me to go free? Yes. Even if I had to bend his arm a little. That doesn't surprise me. He seemed to have no intention of changing his mind. I feel more sorry for my mother. She seems so sweet and happy to see me. You don't seem to be all that close to your parents. I hadn't seen them since I was five years old. I barely remember them. They find me, capture me, and lock me up in this warehouse. Hard to grow close after all that. My family is the Noughts. I am sorry for my parents, but that is the way of it now. Can I go home? Yes. You should still go and say farewell to your mother. Then find your way to your ship. I will see you there.
Madam? Are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to... Mike? You do. It's a rather sad affair, and though solved, leaves a broken family behind. All we can do is plot a course. No one tells the wind what to do. I do thank you. I didn't think you'd go to so much trouble for a cabin boy. Your actions bring you honor. Be back soon, Captain. Who is there? May the Illuminated save us. Did the smuggler send you? The man to which you are referring was arrested and thrown into prison. But reveal to me your hiding place. Oh, the traitor! Have you come to deliver us to the Inquisition then? Please, please, have pity on our souls. We have committed no crime. We are not heretics. We are nothing more than historians. In that case, why is the Ambassador of Teleme so concerned about your teachings? Why is the Inquisition looking for you, and why are you hiding? Our only error was wanting to publish our work. It's true. We presented our research, but it didn't please the censor. And here you have the result. We fled all the way to Serene, thinking we would be safe. But the Inquisition wants to silence us so badly that they followed us here. Tell me more about your research. What about it is so horrifying that it would provoke such a fuss? Our work concerned the teachings of St. Lucius. The disciple of St. Matthias? The one who returned to Teleme after traveling with his master? The very same. His writing was carefully preserved, but never seriously studied. With the discovery of Tirfredi, we thought it crucial to take a look at the original text. We wanted to verify if this island could have been the faraway place that he spoke of. The Eden of St. Matthias. And? What did you find? Teofredi is without any doubt the land that our St. Matthias and his disciples went to. But the text that we discovered was radically different from what we expected to find. In the original text, St. Lucius doesn't speak of an Eden, of the paradise of the Illuminated. He speaks of a voice that came from the depths of the earth, which convinced St. Matthias to stay there. It was written in black and white, and there is no doubt about it. 
The original was written in Lucius's own hand. I understand now what that text has cost you. This voice from the depths sounds more the power of a demon than a saint. The sacred texts are always difficult to interpret, but what is written is written. Who were you hoping would give you asylum? We were hoping to reach Al Saad. The Inquisition won't chase us into the den of their enemies. Our research won't interest the Bridge Alliance, or at least I doubt it. But at least we'll be safe. By entering Al Saad as clandestines, you risk being taken for spies. That would be better than being burned at the stake. Did you try speaking with the censors? You could. Forget what you have discovered, perhaps? Oh, we have signed already an abjugation stating that we misunderstood the sacred texts of St. Lucius. We were even ready to say that we had never seen the true text, or anything else that would have pleased them. It served no purpose. It's our lives they are after. I see. Well... You have no other choice but to run and seek refuge in enemy territories. I beg of you, please do not deliver us to them. Let us continue on this path. I don't have the heart to deliver you to the Inquisition, but I cannot do much else to help you. Your smuggler is locked up. Maybe there are others in his band that can help you. Be careful and discreet, and you will survive. Oh, thank you, my lady. You are a just woman. May the Illuminated protect you. Thank you for having heard us and helped. You are truly full of kindness. You have a kind heart, Greenblood. It'll be the end of you, but that doesn't bother me. I wouldn't have wanted those poor buggers to end up on a burning pyre. It would seem that I'm not the only one with a tender heart. Good day, Excellency. Lady de Sade, to what do I owe the pleasure? It pains me to inform you that the heretics you seek have fled. Curse them! How could that possibly have happened? Alas, these renegades have found protection with the ambassador of the Bridge Alliance. I would not have been able to capture them without risking a diplomatic incident that my uncle would have condemned. The bridge. I thought as much. Those heretics have turned to them. But I had hoped that you might intervene quickly enough to stop them. It is truly regrettable. We have nothing else to do but pray that the Luminous might shield us from their lies. I must be going. Farewell, Excellency. May the light guide you, Dasade.
Madam, are you ready? Can we wait? We should be able to set sail with the time. I have a favor to ask before we leave. I'm all ears. We would like to load some merchandise into your ship's hold. Impossible. You're too late for that. All merchandise must be registered at the Port Authority, and the formalities are long. So, unless you're asking me to turn smuggler and hide contraband on my vessel... I wouldn't go that far. We're only talking about a few crates, after all. Well then, they'll have to wait. The next ship for New Serene leaves in a month. Hellfire! If that shipment doesn't leave today, the commander will have my hide. <laughs> Captain, I understand your position, but isn't there some way we can get these crates on board? <sighs> Listen here. I haven't forgotten what you did for our Jonas. I would gladly do you the favor, but my quartermaster is more stubborn than the tide. He is convinced that thugs want to use our vessel to bring who knows what aboard. And, because of that, he's placed guards to watch over the registered merchandise before they're loaded up. All that I can do for you is to write your crates into the ship's manifest. If you manage to get them into the warehouse, they'll find their way into the ship's hold. And with the manifest, the crazy Gustavo won't see nothing but smoke. Please try and avoid roughing up those brave guards. They are my fellow Norts, after all. Be back soon, Captain. Captain, milady, we were given orders to wait here with the merchandise. The way is clear. It's time to get going. Do your best to be quick and quiet about it. You won't have much time to move at all. Don't you be worrying now. We're off. The warehouse is at the end to the right there. You can't miss it. Move out. Quick steps. Madam, are you ready? Can we, we should be able to set sail. Permission to board the ship. We are ready. Certainly. But keep in mind that we'll be at sea for several months. If you have any farewells to make or any final business to put into order, now is the time. No, my house is in order. We are ready to embark. Perfect. Follow me. I am so eager to discover Tia Fridi. My isle, my new city. You'll need to arm yourself with patience. The voyage will be long. I've been told the trip lasts months. And they say the place is full of gigantic creatures, as big as buildings. That's right. I heard that the Norts even brought one back in one of their ships. I doubt that. The Norts are strange, but they're not idiots. Those conniving, piss-distilling, bridge-building liars. The creature was supposed to be out for days. They'll pay for this. What the hell manner of cargo are you transporting? Help! We need ropes! We must contain it! Help! Come then. Let's lend them a hand.
blood. How do you fare? Fine, fine. It is dead. Are you wounded? I'm well. Your lessons have proven effective. I've never seen a beast this size. It's quite extraordinary. Cousin, what a fight. You were illustrious. I'm not of the same mind. I have the feeling it was already weakened. I did nothing more than finish it off. Your humility remains a constant. But believe me, that battle was absolutely epic. Madam, gentlemen. <laughs> Your cousin's enthusiasm is most impressive. This journey is his long-awaited chance to prove his worth. He has a demanding father. More likely, he's just happy to be free of this hornet's nest. I definitely know I am. That's certain. Stations, lads! Wear anchor and ready her to wear! Lively now, lively! Catch me a win! Gentlemen, I am Constantine of House Orsay, your new governor. 
I have no idea what sort of ceremony you've prepared for my arrival, but I would gladly skip it, so... <laughs> indeed, indeed, these are rather peculiar customs. I, I see, I see, it seems you are quite intent on serving me a drink. Hello? Cat got your tongue, gentlemen? Would it be those annoying beaks? <laughs> I am truly sorry these doctors should have shown a greater measure of courtesy. Thank you, dear doctors. Move along. Don't trouble the noughts. Pay no attention to them. Instead, just drink. The long voyages at sea require the appropriate treatment as soon as we land. According to our scientists, without fortifiers, you might catch your death, and that would be quite regrettable. I should have chosen death. This concoction is liquid torture. I would think that they would have warned you on the ship. Not in the slightest. And you must be Lady Morange, my predecessor. You are correct. There you are! To your health! Aha! You got your dose of bile too. Allow me to present to you Lady Morange, and to you, my dear lady, my most trusted cousin. Where is the captain? He seems to be preoccupied with some sort of admiral. Indeed. Then I will have to thank him later for this most marvelous voyage. Excellency! Lead me to the palace, I beg you. And, whenever possible, go by way of all the intriguing alleyways. I am dying with impatience to discover this new city. My city! Uh, your Excellence! We must wait for our escort! No need! Have no fear, for I am here to defend you, my lady. I've been scullied. How so? My admiral laid me off. My cousin was nonetheless delighted with your services. I hope that there was no misunderstanding. None, I'm sure of it. She just ordered me to give you any assistance you might need. This request doesn't seem to please you. Don't take offense, but it's not pleasant for a captain to abandon his ship. In any case, here I am at your service for a while. <laughs> 